Hello, I'm Old Nile. Currently, you are looking at Influent, a game that I recently picked up from the current Humble Bundle. Which is, um, well, for the most part, it, I think it is based around the Japanese games. Uh, games developed in Japan. And, well, as you can see, Influent is based on language learning. Now, that is it's in itself an interesting topic for me because, well, most of my knowledge of English itself comes from video games, pretty much. Well, and partly cartoons, but mostly uh, video games. I mean, I've been playing games for like, I don't know, over 15 years, ever since I was like, I don't know, seven. I guess that's where I regularly started playing them. And, um, well, as it happens, I mean, I picked up uh, like pretty much everything that I encountered in games. I mean, for instance, uh, games with an inventory system are pretty typical with... Um, well, I mean, not... But think of like uh, Knights of the Old Republic, for instance. Like, you get an item, you get its name, you get uh, different stats, maybe a description. And from these things you can, you can associate from the picture to the meaning of the word that you can see there. Like, I don't know, uh, UB's en environmental suit or whatever, I guess. I mean, it's a bit of an extreme example, but you get what I mean. Or say Minecraft, where you can hover over uh, icons of different stuff you collect from the world, and it says wooden pickaxe or stone block or whatever. So you see, such as such uh, video games are a good uh, language learning tool, but um, I don't think uh, video games have uh, reached that um, kind of status where they are actually like properly acknowledged as a le language learning tool. I mean, I have multiple times I have tried to like uh, do presentations during uh, university courses where I where the topic was language learning and well for me the most um, well hands-on experience with that was would, would have been my experience uh, in learn learning English from video games. And I never really felt that uh, I was well, not me, but uh, the topic that I was trying to uh, get get across to my audience. So I never felt that uh, it was taken very seriously. I think people still uh, believe that games are games and they are for entertainment. You cannot like acquire any knowledge from them, which is a bit of a sad state, but hopefully that will change uh, over time. I believe it will. Especially if, if there are games like Influent, to course back to our topic here. So, what is Influent? Well, as you can see, again, it's a language learning game. And I'm in this video I will try to introduce to you how it actually does that. I mean, beforehand I can say that it's a pretty fun tool to learn a language and it's pretty effective as well. Now. When we say language learning, uh, you'll have to uh, uh, know that uh, Influent will not teach you a language by itself. Basically, it is like, well, it's it's mostly focused on vocabulary, and well, it uh, gives you like a good introduction to a language that you are not familiar with yet. So. Um, well, I mean, there are different examples. I mean, you can get various uh, language packs for Influent. So, like, if you are interested in learning German, you can purchase the game with the German pack. And if you want to get further language packs, like, you, for instance, after German, you want to move on to Mandarin Chinese, for instance, you can get that DLC and um, have, have that content. I mean, the Mandarin Chinese language content in your game. So, yeah, that's basically how it works. But um, for instance, what, what I'm trying to say is that uh, if you want to learn Mandarin Chinese from like ground zero, like from the absolute start, I guess Influent wouldn't be a big help because, well, first of all, you have to learn the alphabet as well, Mandarin Chinese alphabet, or I guess the same case, same is the case with uh, Russian. You have to learn the Cyrillic alphabet first if you want to, well, to be able to read what the different words are uh, in the game, which we will see in a second. Because as things are, 
my choice of uh, the first language pack for Influent was Russian because, well, for one for one part, I think I'm pretty much covered with English with my MA MA master's degree and uh, like a separate language exam. So I'm not sure Influent would teach me anything new in English. However, effective it would be in that. I also have a German language exam, so I and German isn't exactly my favorite language. I don't, I don't know. I found personally, I found Russian a lot easier for various reasons. However, um, weird that my sound. But um, so, but yeah, I had some. I took some courses in Russian like a couple of years ago, like absolute beginner courses, and as such, I uh, I know the the Cyrillic alphabet. I have a basic collection of vocabulary items so I know some words I know how to introduce myself I know some of the basics of like Russian pronunciation so I thought that this uh, game I mean influent with the Russian uh, language pack would be something that I would be interested in taking a look at and so far I'm I'm pretty impressed I have to say so I decided to uh, introduce to you what the game is about and how how it's an effective tool in teaching you a, a new language or at least its vocabulary. Now, first of all, we have your basic options here. I mean, it is a 3D game, but um, well, the basic premise is that you are moving around in your apartment, as you can see in a bit. So it's not a giant world that you can explore. It's just a an apartment but there is a lot of stuff in there that you can explore and well collect in a way which you will see in a bit and there are also language op options here now the good thing is that uh, you can also change the user interface language here so for instance well basic is of I mean the default one is obviously English but say that uh, if I wanted to uh, like for a, some one reason or another I wanted to learn Russian, but at the same time I wanted to learn German as well, I could just apply that uh, language, I mean the user interface language back, which are separate things. So if I... Uh, so basically the the user interface would be German and the, like, the uh, words that I hear or discover in the game would be like spoken in Russian and um, the, all the text would be German so it's like a like a double uh, language learning uh, well exactly that okay so you get what I mean so you can choose the language of the U UI as well basically which is a pretty useful thing okay so let's see what the game is itself uh, okay so that's my language back there I mean my save so here we go. This is the apartment I was speaking of, and this is our protagonist. Well, the basic... Well, there is a bit of a story to the game. It's not overdone. I mean, the focus here is on, you know, interacting with the various items you find in your apartment and learning what their name is in your target language. But basically, the premise is that uh, this guy is an inventor who created, a, well, the the language learning tool which is in a weird meta way the game that you are actually playing the Senji Genjiten I think it's called but the uh, problem was that it, this device was stolen from him and uh, he decided to create a better version of this Senji Genjiten and and prove to the world that by learning over 300 words uh, uh, the new version of the Senji Genjiten is better so he is act he is so he wanted to prove that he is the inventor of the Sanji Genjiten by uh, using this device in his own apartment and learning a good deal of vocabulary in a target language so yeah that's basically the story now what you do in this game is that as you can see you can highlight various items and like i said there's a whole bunch of items in the in this little world the apartment that you live in 
you can pretty much click on anything you can find around the room. And when that, uh, when you do that, uh, two things happen. Like for instance, let's click on this uh, poster here. Placat. On the one hand, you get the well, the word in text. Sorry to any, everyone who uh, cannot read Cyrillic, but uh, this, like you, like you just heard, this is uh, the Russian for a poster. Placat. Placat. So, on the one hand you get the text, and you can also hear what the pronunciation is of that word, which is, for me, it's pretty useful when it comes to Russian, because, well, I guess with any language, the pronunciation doesn't necessarily um, mirror the way it is, that word is written. I mean, English has a lot of examples for that as well. Don't even get me started on that. I had some misadventures there. Okay, so, as you can see, you can... Locat click on various items, uh, hear what they are pronounced and what they are called. Ключи. Yeah, that's keys. And with many of these items you can also click on the, uh, I mean, examine the various parts of these items, like for the bed. If you just simply click on it, it will say the the, vo the name of the whole thing. Кровать. Кровать. But uh, if you want to know what pillow is, which is a part of the bed here, you can hold down control and click on that particular thing which is highlighted, say the mattress. Matras. Which is pretty similar to English, luckily. Russian is good because it is similar to many different languages. It has a lot of common with English and with Hungarian as well, so that's one of the reasons why I like that language. So yeah, you can... This is basically how you start the game, you're just uh, clicking on stuff. But um, another, well, the next uh, part of the game is that uh, you have to make like a vocabulary list, list from the various things that you find. So, say for instance that you, uh, well, that's, I'm, I mean, I pretty much discovered everything in this room. I've been practicing uh, in this area, so I've... Uh, done pretty much everything but let's take a look at this area like the kitchen which I haven't been to yet so for instance let's see what uh, the apple is called in Russian Yablaka. Yablaka. okay so if I if you see something new you have to press space and that will add it to the to the vocabulary list as, as you saw up there now up here if you go up with your mouse here you can see the vocab list so this is basically the list of all the various words that you have discovered through the game. Uh, in total there are 420 words in the game, I mean, meaning uh, nouns, some adjectives and words as well. Because, well, first you just get the, like, the name of a particular item, say, um, the wardrobe. Gartirop is again a bit similar to English, but some of the items like uh, the frame of the bed Rama для кровати. Uh, also as an adjective that you can discover for uh, you have to use these stars Черный. You have, so you have to use these stars that you can collect by mastering uh, uh, certain words I mean all of the words pretty much so if you master a word which means that in a, in a part of the game which I will talk about in a bit time attack which is like it is basically the testing like a challenge of how how much or how well you can remember those words that you have collected so by gaining these stars you can unlock additional Kravat. words like say here this is uh, will be a verb I, I'm assuming it will be sleeping spot spot mm, yeah so that's sleeping so the uh, oh, Kravat. Exactly, Kravat. Uh, Spot. So as you discover more and more words, you have to press space every time to add those particular words to the vocab list. Basically, this is how you collect things in this game. I mean, well, um, words, that's pretty much all you have to collect. And there are also things you can interact with, like uh, have a look inside the wardrobe here and uh, see what the different uh, pieces of clothing are called. Galstuk. Galstuk. Okay, that's a tie. Or boxes. Karobka. Karobka. Okay. So yeah, there are a, part, a number of things you can interact with as well, and 
I'm not even sure I had a look in here. Rubashka. Rubashka, okay. Oh, I haven't had that yet. Okay, so there are still things to explore. Let's see. Oh, some socks. Na sok. I think I have those, yeah. Let's close them. Inside, you have the bathroom here. Okay, so basically you get the idea. You have to walk around in your apartment. You have to look for uh, things that of which the name of which you do not know yet know yet, and uh, collect them for your vocab list. That's basically the first part of the game. Now after that comes the where the actual challenge lies. Is that uh, what I mentioned before, time attack. Now let's see this list for instance. You can uh, do, go for random as well. But uh, basically time attack is that you will have these, uh, you have a list of 10 words. And... Well, basically, the game will randomly choose uh, them one after the other, and you have to point and double-click on the uh, items, the corresponding items. You can also uh, customize uh, how the test, to call it that, uh, how it will be um, well done. For instance, you can only you can do only text by just uh, the words appearing down here or just after hearing, so you just hear the words and you can, um, you have to, um, you know, recognize them and select them in the world around you. So let's uh, have a go at that. Not sure how how fresh my knowledge of this list is, I didn't even, didn't really have a look at it, but we'll see. Deska для заметок. Deska для I think that's this thing. Referat. Yeah, referat. That's the report. Fotografia. Fotografia. Well, easy enough. Prelog. Prelog. Oh boy. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Prelog. I'm pretty sure it was in this room. Prelog. Hmm. Well, I can't remember that one right now. Визитная карточка. I remember that. That's business card. Гардероб. Well, we just discussed that. Printer. Printer. Easy enough. Computer. Yeah. Календарь. Like I said, there are many similarities between Russian and English. Стена. Стена is wall, I think. Yes. Okay, and um, here you get the score. Like, well, I only got... Um, I only couldn't get one out of the ten. So let's see what was that uh, one that I couldn't remember. Uh, Brilock. Brilock. Oh, the keychain, yeah. So yeah, you get the idea. You get ten words at random. You have to select the uh, corresponding items around in the world around you. And if you manage to get them right three times, you master them and you get a star which you can use to unlock adjectives and verbs, which give you even more items, I mean, uh, words, that you can learn through this whole time effect thing. Okay, let's see another list. Or maybe just uh, explore the kitchen some more and try how good I am with that. I wonder how different sandwich is in Russian. Butterbrot. I'm sorry? Butterbrot. Butterbrot. So basically, uh, bread with butter. There is now this looks a bit similar to English. Sandwich. Yep, <laughs> that's an easy word for English people to remember, I guess. Oh, okay, we have a new vocab list here. Let's have a look at it. This is the current one that I have just finished. Stebel. 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 Oh, stem. Okay. Stapler. St oh, that's the stapler. It's easy to remember. Udarit. Udarit. Oh, hit. Lovit. Lovit. To catch. Okay. Zakruchivat. Zakruchivat. Oh, okay. If you are Russian or you speak. Russian pretty well. I apologize if my pronunciation is causing you ear bleeding, but I am, as like I said, I'm still learning Russian. I haven't had many opportunities for practicing 
Russian pronunciation, but this game has provided me an excellent opportunity to do so. So, so yeah, this, basically this is the promise of the game. There is an, another, uh, well, uh, game mode. It's pretty much time attack, except you get a little flying thing, little spaceship, I think it is called, that you can use as a, well, it's basically your cursor. Okay, let's do it with text this time, because I'm not sure what the current vocab list is. Sandwich. Oh, okay. Alright, it's... Flying is pretty basic here, I mean, you're not running the danger of falling even if you slow down. You can speed up. There is also a first person view, which is also available in the, you know, in the standard game mode where you walk around as the inventor guy. But you can switch to first person is as well, which is pretty cool. Okay, so uh, we're looking for sandwich, I believe, which was out here. And when you have the target, just shoot the little. There we go. Kriasny. Uh, That's uh, this thing, which I think it means dirty. Stapler. There we go. Stapler. Over here, I believe. Okay, need to aim a little. Oh, this is difficult. Spot. Oh boy. Okay. Spot. Which is related to Kravat, which means bed, so I'm assuming it is it means to sleep. Rubashka. Ru Rubashka. I think that was uh, a sweater. But it's in here. Oh it's a good thing I can open them from from an airplane. Okay, I have to maneuver a little. I have to target. Or maybe it was here. That's not. No, that's not. Done. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not a big, not, not a big fan of this game mode. I mean, it's fun to fly at a little Lavit. spaceship around, but um, it's, I don't know. It's not the experience I'm looking for. It's from my language learning. I mean, I guess if you like flying around, I mean, like flying games. Oh, I missed that one. I mean, it wasn't the word I thought it was. Oh, that's going to be a difficult one. The baseball bat is under the bed. And so I have to hit it like so. I wonder if I can fly around uh, under the bed. <laughs> just barely. Okay. Yablaka was apple, which we, we just discovered. I knew it anyway. Stable. Uh, oh boy, uh, what was it? I think it was related to the plant. I'm not sure if I can actually hit it. Like so. oh, okay. Uh, that was related to the wrench. It means to tighten. Hopefully I'm hitting the wrench. There we go. Oh, okay, we did it. Tivan. Oh, okay. That's a bit of an intense way to learn words, flying around a little spaceship and shooting your your uh, various home appliances to bits with lasers. But if that's your thing, it, it's also an option, and Influent can provide you with that experience. So I think this is pretty much all there is to the game. I mean, that's the basic promise, but uh, you can just go around in your apartment uh, discovering words uh, and testing your knowledge of these words for hours pretty much. I have been playing for like two hours before I recorded this probably and yeah I would say it's a pretty uh, interesting way of uh, well not learning a new language not, not learning a new language but uh, getting introduced to it to its vocabulary in particular, and I would say it's pretty fun, and it's pretty f effective, I mean, I still have to practice a lot, I have to come back, uh, like, to particular areas that I have, I believe that I have mastered, but then I boot up the game again, and I realize that I couldn't, can't remember half of the words that I have learned. Kapilka. 
I haven't even added any of this stuff yet. I have to get get to that later. Okay, guess that, that means safe, Kapilka. Okay, so this was my introduction to Influent. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you think it could help you in learning a new language, or as like I said, getting introduced to it, well, I can definitely recommend checking it out. It's it is still part of the humble bundle, the current one. It'll probably stay that way for like a week, and it's really, really cheap. And there are a variety of language packs available for it. I'm from, from the top of my head, I remember, uh, well, English, obviously, but there is also German, French, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, Mandarin Chinese, Russian, obviously, uh, Bulgarian as well, I think, and probably like a dozen or even more different languages from to choose from. So there's a good selection and there might be even more added to it later if uh, production is still, I mean development is still going, not sure. But I can definitely see the potential in this as as a good way of like getting people to realize that if done cleverly games can in fact teach you stuff, mostly languages in this case. So I've been old now. Das Vitania, I guess. We can go out with that note.